Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial series for animated pickups. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create animated pickups with magnetic effects, like this. Okay, let's get started. Let's open up the content drawer and let's create a new blueprint. Blueprint class of actor. Let's name this pickup magnetic. Open it up. Now let's add a cube. And let's rename this cube pickup underscore sm. Then click and drag the static mesh to be as a root, like this. Compile and save. Let's give it a blue color so we can see it better. In the material, just type blue. So this is the default one. With the cube selected, in the top right corner, type collision. We don't need collision for this box and you will see why in a second. So set this to no collision. So compile and save. And let's add a collision box. Actually, we're going to create collision sphere. So type collision sphere. So we need this one sphere collision. And we're going to name this pickup underscore trigger. For scaling trigger boxes or box collision is the same. Do not use the scale tool, but use over here this one. So we have sphere radius. For optimization purposes, do not scale trigger boxes with this tool, but use this one instead. So I'm gonna put this value of 500, something like this. Now let's make it visible in the game. So type hidden. So hidden in game is checked, so let's uncheck this box. And also very important, type collision. For the collision presets, click on the drop down and go to custom. Make sure to ignore all and to overlap only the pawn. So this means only our player pawn can trigger events. You don't want to shoot a projectile and to trigger something by, by accident. Okay, so only our player can trigger events. So let's close this down. Compile and save. Now let's drop the actor into the world, click and drag. Now when I play the game, when we touch this sphere, we're going to get the actor towards us. Now let's go back, let's come to the event graph, and as always, we're going to delete the first three. So first thing, select the pickup trigger and scroll all the way down. So we need on component begin overlap. So I keep mentioning in every tutorial not to use casting when you see overlap events or similar. Every tutorial is going to teach you like this and cast to third person character. So again, Always and forever, I will tell you, do not use this node. It's not good for your games. I have the full tutorial for this explaining, so please check it out. So never use this thing. Instead, from the other actor, drag a pin and type equal. And now on the side, type get player character. So now we are checking if the player character overlapped with the sphere. And that's it, you don't have to cast or anything like that. Now let's right click and type branch. So we have to compare if this is true or not. So if our player character overlaps the sphere, we're going to fire an event. If something else overlaps, nothing's going to happen. Now, very important thing for these mechanics is to trigger this only once. 
So right click and type do once. From the true, we can connect this. And now what we have to do is to create a timeline. So right click and type timeline. Add timeline. Let's rename this timeline animated pickup timeline. Let's connect with the play and double click to open it up. So the timeline, we want to play this very fast. So length is going to be 0.2. So this is how long the timeline is going to be, how long it's going to last. Let's create a track of float. And for this new track, we're going to type here, animate move alpha. You can right click and create a key. So this we need to be from zero and zero. So we are starting from zero and value is going to be zero. Let's create another one by pressing right click. And this time has to be identical with this length. So if this is 0.2, this one has to be 0.2 as well. So this, you can see it's matching. If it's, for example, 0.5, you see how it goes outside of the timeline's length. So always make sure time and length in the second keyframe or the last one to be the same with the length. And value needs to be one. And we can press these two buttons so you can see the timeline properly. So compile and save and our job is done in the timeline. We can close it up. And this is the flow track we have created. On the right side, you can right click and type set actor location. So we need set actor location. Now we need, when you touch the sphere, we want to set the actor's location. So this actor's location to go towards our player to transition from wherever it is in the world towards us, like a magnet. Now let's see how we can do that. From the new location, drag a pin and type lerp. So we need lerp vector. So it says linearly interpolates between A and B based on alpha. So this is the alpha, which is float. And this is the float we have created. So A is going to be the actor's location, anywhere it is in the world. And B is going to be our player's location. So from here towards our player character. Now for the A, for the actor's location, drag a pin. Let's promote it to variable and type actor start location. So I'm going to make it a bit more clear, this one. And for the B, we need our player character location. So simple way to do this, get player character. And from the return value, get actor location. So we're getting the actor's location of our player. So this timeline is going to go in 0.2 seconds. It's going to go from its original location towards our player character, from A to B. Now let's compile and save. Before testing it out, we have to do one more thing. So find the empty space, right click and type begin play. So I went begin play. So when the game starts, when this actor is in the world, we have to set the actor location to be as a default in a variable. So we can right click and type get actor location. So get actor location. This is going to be self, which means this blueprint. And simple way, click and drag the variable 
Let's set it. Compile and save. Now let's go to the code one more time. When the game starts, we are setting the actor's location into a variable. We are storing that location. For example, if you move over here, this is going to be the default value. If you move it over here, it's going to be set into that variable. Okay? So that way we are going to prevent off any bugs in the game. And when the player touches the sphere, we are going to go from anywhere the actor is in the world towards our player's character. And we are setting the actor's location to that point. Now let's test it out. So let's make it to one high. I'm going to hold on Alt and left click to make a duplicate. I'll put this down and let's play the game. So I touch the sphere. It goes directly to my character. Now let's see the other one. Now it happens only once. Now let's destroy the actor when it comes to us. Let's go back to the blueprint. The easy way to do it from the finished, when the timeline finishes, which means when the actor reaches point B, which is our player character, we're going to destroy the actor. So let's first type print string. And let's type here collected. So that way we know the code is working. And from here, simply destroy actor. Now, don't worry about these messy nodes. We're going to fix this in a second. Let's see if this is working now. You see in the top left corner, the code is working. Perfect. Now let's remove the sphere from the viewport. So we don't want to see this in the game. Select the sphere and type hidden. So we want this to be hidden in game. Now, when you select the static mesh, I when you type collision, if you remember, we have disabled the collision. This means we don't want our player to collide with this box in any way, because when we are finishing the timeline, we're going to destroy the actor either way. Plus, for optimization purposes, this is very good. Now let's fix this mess a bit. You can simply select all this and hold down Control and select this one. And right click, go to Collapse to Function. This is the function we have created. I'm going to double click on the green node just to make a reroute. Now let's rename this function so we know what it's doing. In the bottom left corner, type move towards player. Now let's double click to fix this mess inside as well. I don't like when the nodes are like this, so let's fix it. Okay, now we can close this function. So we can select this function as well, and let's rename this to something like alpha. So that way we know the alpha goes into the alpha. Now let's test it one more time with a function. It works perfectly fine. All right, everyone, this is going to be it for this video. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to make even more animated pickups. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.